What the heck is going on everyone? In this tutorial, what I'm going to do is show you how to update the syntax for Multer Storage Cloudinary in your Surfshop application from my course, Code with Node. So, some of you probably have taken the course and you put in Cloudinary and then you updated it with Multer Storage Cloudinary which basically just makes it to where you're not storing any of the files locally, it just goes straight to Cloudinary. Cloudinary, by the way, for those of you that don't know, is a cloud-based storage for images and I think videos also. We use it for images in this application. So that NPM package for Multer Storage Cloudinary has been updated and is using some newer syntax and it actually breaks the syntax that we're using in the course. So you'll probably experience errors if you're trying to follow along in the course, and that's what this video is all about, getting us through those. All right, cool. So I have a guide here. Um, this is basically the steps that we're going to take to update it. So let's go ahead and start. We're inside the application. This is the state of the application immediately after you've implemented Multer Storage Cloudinary, and this is probably about the time that you're experiencing the errors that you're going to see so one of the errors that you may be experiencing is you've put in all the correct syntax from the video and then you try to run your application and you get an error like this it tells you that cloudinary storage is not a function so this is the main indicator that you're using the newer package but you're using the older syntax so the first thing we want to do of course if you're using the older package is you want to update it in this case you're probably already using the newer one but if you were using the older one, then the first step would be to uninstall the old one and update it to the new one. So it'd be like um, npm uninstall multer storage cloudinary. And then another one of those, npm uninstall cloudinary. And then again, I'm putting semicolons in between each one of these commands. You do an npm, uh, sorry, not npm uninstall, an npm i and now you're installing the newer versions. So again, Multer Storage Cloudinary and NPMI Cloudinary. So what this does is it uninstalls the, the two older versions of Cloudinary and Multer Storage Cloudinary, the NPM packages, and then it installs the two newest versions. So you may already have the newer versions. This again is for anyone that's using older versions. All right, so now those are updated if we go look at the steps of course that was the first step the second step which is the one that will be the first step for most of you because you already have the newer versions of multi uh, storage cloudinary and cloudinary which by the way if we go look at our package json you can see what those versions are for cloudinary it's 1.23.0 at the time of the recording of this video and then multi storage cloudinary is four and so these may be newer by the time you get around to watching this but for now that's where they're at so the next step is to update your model and we have instructions here on what to do but let's go ahead and head over to our model for post and you can see we have an images array and inside the array are an object the object has properties URL and public ID so these have changed URL is now path and public ID is now file name all one word no spaces or underscores or anything like that so URL becomes path and public ID becomes file name. We save this file and now the model has been updated. Step three is we want to update our Cloudinary config to match the syntax from the newer version of Multer Storage Cloudinary. So if you were doing this on your own and you're trying to figure it out, you would have gone to Multer Storage Cloudinary and looked at the, notice here it's version four, you look at the usage here and so this code looks similar to what we're using in our application but it is not exactly the same so you would just update what's different so over here in the cloudinary directory and at index.js we have const cloudinary is equal to require cloudinary make that a little bit bigger here they have that but they also have this dot v2 appended to the end of it so right here at the end before the semicolon, we added .v2. So cloudinary is equal to require cloudinary dot version two or dot v2. The next thing is how they are initializing this cloudinary storage variable. So it looks like they're destructuring a class name cloudinary storage from the multi storage cloudinary npm package. 
So if we go look at how we have it, we're just saying cloudinary storage is equal to the package. And that's why we were getting that error saying that cloudinary storage is not a function. So the difference is our variable here has a lowercase c. We need to update that to a uh, capital C because we're dealing with the class name now. And then use the brackets around it, which if you remember from earlier in the course, this is object destructuring, which what that means is that when we require a multi storage cloudinary, it's returning an object. That object has a property called cloudinary storage, and that property is actually pointing to a class. And so we're going to destructure that class and assign it to a variable called cloudinary storage, capital C, capital S. So then here with const storage is equal to cloudinary storage, that changes too, because this is a class. If we want a new instance of a class, we have to say new. So they went from using a function which is what we had before, to now they're using a class. So we're creating a new instance, we use the new keyword, we use a capital C, they also use destructuring to pull that class out of the object that you get back from Multi Storage Cloudinary. So if we look here, you can see that's how they're doing that. And then here's that new keyword. And that's it. So if we head back over to the instructions, you can see where we've updated this line and these two lines and that's what we've done just now. Lastly we need to update the post controller where we change all cloudinary.v2 to just be cloudinary right because we're already assigning it to v2 in the configuration file and then we want to change all URL to path and all public ID to file name. So if we do a control shift H over here in this is VS code if you go to edit you can see Control shift h on Windows is replace in files. So if you're on Mac or Linux or anything like that, just go to edit, replace in files. For Linux, it may be the same shortcut. For Mac, it's probably like command shift h or something. So you click on that, we get to this window here, and we want to look for cloudinary.v2. And if we look, we have the README, which is what we're we're not looking at it directly here, but that's what this is here I believe um, oh that's the update MS Cloudinary guide but anyway we had two markdown files those we're not interested in here in posts if you go to these two lines you can just click on them it'll open it up here so here's the first one oops make sure you're not selecting the whole thing you can just back out that dot v2 so now it just says cloudinary.uploader and you'll notice now it's not matching on the left this one has disappeared leaving only one so with that last one here inside post controller click on it it takes you to another line this is inside the post destroy go ahead and change that to just cloudinary.uploader now you could have changed it like this to just be cloudinary but then it changes these files also there's a way I think you can just I guess you can just dismiss other files and it won't update those ones um, anyway either way is fine so let's go ahead and close that one. This post.js, let's go ahead and save it now that we've got the Cloudinary instead of Cloudinary version two. And now what we want to do is try and find all instances where we have URL instead of path. But the problem is, of course, there's URL appears everywhere, right? So we can look for like image.url. And of course, we don't want to replace it with Cloudinary. You can see in the views, we have image.url. This is where we're displaying the image on the edit view and the show view. So that's actually step five, update post, uh, post show and edit views, change all instances of URL to path and public ID to file name. So if you wanna update these real quick, we're searching for image.url and we wanna update it to image.path. And so you can see the red is crossed out here. That's the old and then green that's the new. So in order to make this change, you're just going to click replace all or control alt enter. It'll say, hey, there's two occurrences across two files with image.path replace. It's already saved those files for you, so you're good to go. Okay, so the other thing is public ID. Now, public ID is pretty unique of a variable name. Uh, in this specific application. So I think the only time you're gonna encounter it is if it's dealing with Cloudinary. So let's just do public underscore ID. 
and we have it in the readme we have it over here in the update uh, I think we can just dismiss that one and dismiss this one so these are the these are the ones we're interested in here right so in the edit.ejs view we have it here the value is image.publicid and then we have it several times in our controller so all of these are dealing with public ID from Cloudinary. So if we want to change it, we're going to change it to file name. And you can see where it updates all these instances. So we're going to go ahead and replace those. It says you're replacing 10 occurrences across two files. Go ahead and replace. So that happens. Uh, this file, make sure you save it. This index.js is the Cloudinary index.js. I just noticed that it hadn't been saved yet. So you can actually close that once you're done saving it. The model, of course, that's from earlier. Once you're done changing that, you can close it. And so this is bringing us back over here to the controllers, post.js. And you can even see where it updated automatically, image.filename instead of public ID. So if we do a search for public ID, it's showing up in the readmes. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and ignore that for now. All right. So. The other thing, other than public ID, is changing URL to path. So we already did that in the views, but I think there's a couple other places in the controller where we have to deal with the URL. So this one might be a little more complicated because, again, you type in URL and you get all kinds of different files. So, oh, actually, this is really interesting. Um, my guide just says URL to path, so I'm going to have to update that. But it's not just URL, it's actually secure URL. So I'm going to dismiss the ones where they're not relevant. And what we end up with is in PostJS, our controller for posts, we can just click on one of these and you can see in post create, we've already changed public ID to be file name. This one is saying the URL property, which is what we had before over here in our model for post, right? It was URL and now it's path. And so we want to go update all the other instances of URL to make them path. So again, over here, this URL becomes path, but it's pointing to file.secureurl. So file is the file that's been uploaded to Cloudinary. And it's giving us back this result from the API. And the result is going to have a property now called path that points to the URL. So it's no longer called secure underscore URL. So again, I have to update that in this guide right here. But secure URL is now going to become path. And so we can do a control shift H. And you can see here URL becomes path. But it's trying to update file.secure URL to path and we don't want to do that so we're going to dismiss that one we just want to update this one here replace it there's one more situation here where we have a secure URL that needs to be updated to path so the, the readme we can go ahead and dismiss that the post.js controller path is pointing to file.secure URL currently right here and then it would update it to, to file that path. So you can just click this button here, replace, and now it's file.path. So if you do a search for secure URL and nothing pops up other than the readme, uh, which is just the old instructions, and then you look for like image.url, nothing pops up there. You look up file.secureurl, nothing pops up there, except for the readme, of course. And you look up file.publicid, again, only in the readme. So as long as your controller file doesn't have public ID or secure URL or image URL or anything like that, and you've updated everything to be path and file name, then we should be good to go. So we can test it. This file is already saved. Go ahead and run our application. And first and foremost, we'll look for errors. We're connected to the database. No errors yet, so that's good. Head back over to localhost and try to create a new post. So 
So I'm just gonna upload a random image here. Submit. And it takes a second for it to upload. These images are pretty big. But once it's done, and we get that response back from Cloudinary, and it gets the post gets created, all that information gets stored in the database, and we get redirected, then we should be able to see this image. Sure enough, there's the image right there. Now, if we go to edit this image, it should also be available here, which it is. This is great. So if we delete that, choose another file, and we pick a different image, and then we click Submit, it should delete the old one and replace it with the new one. So again, it has to upload it update the database. So there's the new one, the old one's gone. Lastly, if we try to delete the entire post, it's going to send a request to delete the image from Cloudinary also so it doesn't get polluted and take up space there. So if we click delete, the post was deleted successfully. That means the image is also deleted. You can check your Cloudinary dashboard to make sure. So that's it for updating the new syntax. Let me go ahead and just review everything real quick. So the steps from the guide here are if you are experiencing the error, then you're not the error we talked about originally about um, I think it's uh, Cloudinary upload. Let's go back and look at it real quick. Cloudinary storage. If it says Cloudinary storage is not a function and you're getting that error, then that means you're using the newer version of multi storage Cloudinary. You can always check your package JSON file and go see which version you're using. If you're using version four, then you're good to go. If you're not and you have an older version, you might want to update it. So in that case, you'd want to use the instructions from step one. Moving on to step two, you're going to update the way that we store this information in the database. So on a post, there's an images array, and the array holds objects. The objects point to the URL and the public ID. We want to change those to path and file name because that's the new naming for what comes back from the Cloudinary API. So then you update your Cloudinary config file in Cloudinary index.js, and you just update this line and these two lines. So you add that .v2, you do the destructuring of Cloudinary storage class, make sure that you change Cloudinary storage to a capital C, and then const storage is now equal to new, don't forget that new keyword, Cloudinary storage with a capital C. You can save that file, that one's done. The last one is updating the post controller, the post show and edit views, so the CJS files, and you want to make sure that you change all instances of URL to path, also secure URL, so I have to update that here in a second, to path, and then public ID to file name. Great. Hopefully your code's working. If you did run into any bugs, maybe rewatch the video. If you still can't get it working, let me know, and I'll be able to help you. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. We'll catch you all in the next one.